Welcome to Think Like a Nurse, the video outreach of KeithRN.com. The essence of clinical reasoning is the ability of the nurse to think in action and to reason as the situation changes by capturing trends in the labs, vital signs, and assessment data collection, comparing the prior to the current, and looking for those trends that may be concerning. This is the essence of clinical reasoning that must be practiced in the classroom. Because if we do not grasp, the student doesn't grasp the essence of the situation, they will fail to rescue and their patient could be harmed and could even die as a result. This is much more than just a pedagogy change. This is really a matter of life and death. And we must recognize that. And so there's a series of clinical reasoning questions that provide a template for thinking like a nurse that we can do over and over again. And the questions that I have derived that I use as a template for thinking are used in my clinical reasoning case studies. And they come from Dr. Benner and the paradigm example of Lisa Day from Educating Nurses, as well as my own observations and how I think as a nurse after 30 years of a clinical experience. And these are the questions that in every scenario that we do in the classroom or in the clinical setting that our students must be able to identify to think like a nurse. And the clinical reasoning questions are this. Number one, what is your primary medical problem in order to identify the needed priority setting? Number two, what is the underlying cause or pathophysiology of their current problem. Pathophysiology must be situated and it must be understood by our nursing students in every context to be the deep thinkers and anticipate problems in practice. Number three, what labs, vital signs, and assessment data are relevant to this patient. This is where if we give students the opportunity to practice clinical thinking in the classroom using scenarios derived from practice, we can practice this relevance of what labs are, are essential and, and foundational to clinical practice, what assessment findings are essential. This can be practiced and then applied in the clinical setting. Number four, what is then your concern or your nursing priority? It may or may not be NANDA diagnostic language. We don't have to hold to that in the practice of nursing because it may or may not be relevant. Number five, what are then your nursing interventions that you'll initiate? This is nursing process 101. What's my nursing priority? And then what are my nursing interventions? So clinical reasoning incorporates nursing process and incorporates those foundations of the practice. We're not throwing them away and changing it with something totally different, but we're reflecting how nurses truly think and practice. Clinical reasoning number six. What is the rationale for the nursing interventions or what the physician ordered? Nurses must understand what medications and why the doctor ordered as well as the rationale for their own interventions. We must not just have care plans with interventions. These interventions must be understood with rationale. Number seven, what body system then will you focus on most thoroughly in your head to toe assessment based on your primary problem. As we know, we don't do a thorough head to toe on every part, or don't do a thorough assessment of every body system. There are some situations where we focus on the neuro, the cardiac, the GI, based on their presentation and their primary problem. We, our students must be able to think like a nurse and say, I'm gonna focus especially thoroughly and more deeply in this body system and they must be able to articulate that. Number eight, what is the worst possible complication to anticipate? This is essential. They must know what is that what if that is very likely, is it sepsis, is it hemorrhage, whatever it may be, that what if of the worst possible complication must be understood and articulated. And number nine, what nursing assessments are you, are you then needing to identify and respond to 
if this complication develops. We must intentionalize that students must need to be able to be looking for those adverse what if complications, be looking for them, hope and pray they don't develop, but if they do, they're looking for it while it's early and catch it and rescue their patients successfully. And that's what clinical reasoning is all about, the ability to rescue a patient with a status change. And that's the essence of clinical reasoning. And that's what is so foundational to, again, how nurses think in practice and the essence of thinking like a nurse. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to speaking to you again.